Ladies and gentlemen, the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. On with the show. Uh. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Turn Right Machine Works. My name is Keith. And we're out here today continuing on all in a week. We're on our second part of the project of our second part of, of this uh, video series. We're starting on the Babbitt bearing. This large self-aligning bearing is pretty good size. We have our melting pot down here and we're going to take the torch that I have over there and we're going to melt this out down into the pot. And I'll fire off the, the uh, the gas on it and we'll clean and we'll salvage what Babbitt is salvage you know out of this project here we've got both shelves the top and the bottom here after that we're gonna bake the castings just make sure that we get all the the, the uh, impurities out the oils we get it dried out pretty good and then we're gonna tin it and then we'll that'll be pretty much set ready to go we'll go in and we got to turn a mandrel that's gonna be our dam and uh, create our cavity we want to pour. So we're getting ready to rock and roll on this and uh, I think everything's all set. Ladles, brushes, uh, stir sticks, uh, wire brush, gas torches. Let's go. Is it better to start at the bottom or the top? Who knows? We'll go ahead and start up here. We'll see what we got going on here. I could get a bigger torch tip. That's okay. We're gonna, we're gonna leave it leaning back until we get most of it out of here and then we might kick it with our chain a little bit because uh, the little pockets here kind of hold the babbit in there. That actually helps hold the babbit in keeps it from rotating around but you also need it to bond to the outside and that's what the tinning is all about on a Babbitt bearing of this size here so we'll be tinning it with 50-50 solder By doing this right into the pot, it's going to give us an idea of actually how much Babbitt we'll need for this pour. We're going to make the ID smaller because we're going to bore it out in the lathe. So it, it will take a little bit more than we're actually taking out of here now. Plus, this actually is worn larger.
this is really pretty nice. I've I've been given some bearings of poor and some pretty poor conditions and pretty dirty material. Sometimes not even reusable. I remember in metal shop in high school in the ninth grade, and and uh, it was it was time to uh, do our casting project, and we were given a piece of styrofoam to go ahead and carve out. And uh, I started mine, and I was doing a birdie for my shift lever in my first car. And uh, after my mom saw what I was working on, she. Uh, she made me change it, and then it was a peace sign, so uh, just a little funny story about growing up and being, being a kid. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and we're going to lift this up a little bit. I'm going to shut off my torch just so I don't want to have too many things in my hands here. Okay, uh, the other up. Okay, there we go. We'll just get out as much as we possibly can here. We may have to re-pick them in the middle there. No biggie, but... We can always take a rotary burr and get in there and... hollow them out. It looks like really nice uh, tang holes. Really clean material in there too. Okay, that's pretty good. We're gonna set that one off to the side and we're gonna clean up our pot here. We're gonna clean up this pot of metal we have here. <clears throat> and uh, get a good idea of how much material we're actually gonna have to have in that pot to pour this cavity. All right, we moved the camera around a little bit. Out here, it's pretty hard to uh, to deal with the sunlight on the lens of the camera. So anyway, we're gonna go ahead and just break off the little spillage that was on the bronze key here. And Babbitt doesn't stick to everything. And we're gonna go ahead and clear the dross off the top. And we're gonna we're rubbing the bottom a little bit. The general rule on Babbitt temperature, the old timers as I was going, is 
you're working it with a stick and if the stick smokes but it doesn't catch on fire you're pretty close to that temperature you kind of adjust your temperature of your heat and see the stick smoking but it's not and See if I can bring you in a little bit more where you're actually looking at the pot, see what I'm doing here. Okay, I get a junk old metal coffee can. They don't make them like this anymore. <laughs> they don't make nothing like anything anymore. <laughs> uh, okay, so what you're doing, I mean this could be pushed anywhere you want, but I bring it all over to one side. Shit floats to the top of Babbitt all the junk see I'm holding that stick in there like that and you see that it'll it'll blacken it it'll smoke but it's not catching on fire you don't want to overheat Babbitt material because then you separate the metal alloys air will give it an oxidized look right on the top as it sets but you see where I stir it and I bring it that's clean metal but as soon as the air hits hits it on the top there you will get oxidized material so that's why when you're pouring the pour actually comes from underneath that surface condition Okay, so um, that's the depth of our material in the pot. That would be a good gauge right there of uh, the amount of material we took out of there. So we probably want to be somewhere up around that curve of there or a little bit deeper. This is you know, probably one-third pot and we'll probably have a two-thirds pot so that we have plenty of material to pour that one big half all right we're going to go ahead and pour this into our pie or cupcake uh, pan here and then we'll have little ingots that are much easier to bring back and melt in there okay i got my spice script set and ready to go. I went ahead and picked up infrared thermometer and uh, so I'm putting this in and you point it to the shiny metals and it doesn't always get you exactly the temperature because the reflection is not right off of uh, chromy metals. So I'm getting about 270 degrees Fahrenheit right there but if I put this right on the barrel or the bowl right next to it I got 650 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's a pretty good, that is a pretty good temperature to be working the metals as far as actually having it in a liquid form. All right, and that coincides pretty much with the manufacturer's temperature on their chart there for working with it. All right, this gives me control of my, my pot here. All right, find a level spot on this hill. There we go, a Babbitt six pack.
parts into three job with a bell center here I've made a couple light cuts here. We were getting some stringy stringy stuff uh, This is a low similar. This was from another cut um, so anyway, we were getting a stringy material and I jacked up the feed rate uh, so that we could break a chip and uh, I think I found it pretty comfortable. This is 5 inch. We're taking it down basically to 4 inches 680 is the finished shaft size. So I think I want to bring this down to like uh, 4 and a half. I think 4 and a half is going to be the, the diameter of the bore we want to pour. We want some good material in there in case we got a little bit of shrinkage in. Um, we'll see what we can do here. Okay, so we touch stop it here. We backed it off. Then we took 50, 50 or 60. We'll start there. We'll take 60. I think our last cut was like 50. So we got a little tiny bit. There's our stringy chip. Okay, now it'll turn a chip and then it'll break. Turn the chip and break. You do have to keep it clear. There you go. We could probably increase it just a little bit more. It's not a bad finish. This is not ideal material. It's almost like pipe. It could be thick wall schedule pipe. There was a piece that was given to us to uh, fit our, our size range. But this is how pipe cuts. That's pretty good. Let's see what we got here. We got 19 and a half, and I think uh, I think our bearing overall length is like 17 or so. So we might be able to get one cut and then just cut cut off the edge, or just leave it hanging on there. Uh, unsure yet. Let's uh, we we know we we've got a couple hundred to come off of here, so. Let's go ahead and start another cut here. Hope you're enjoying the video and this is just a quick note on uh, production of swag and other things as well. Our roses are back in full production. We actually uh, purchased a oven so that we can have it out here and running for time and we're not uh, interrupting the house uh, oven and it doesn't matter about the heat so I can let it roll all summer long. So we got about 16 roses right now and I'm starting to paint the blossoms. We have two new engraving requests which you know that's something you handle through email uh, or if you wanted a different color rose um, I I do have a couple plain bronze for that choice and I also have a couple that are bronze and then just the rose is colored the most popular rose is the bronze red and of course I'm getting ready to slam out a lot of those in the last week, we've got another hundred of the large Patriot Attitude stickers. Those have been going like crazy, and thanks for sending me the pictures. Uh, I like seeing them on the side of the, uh, the family van. That's cool. Everybody's loving the Patriot Attitude, and, uh, and the request was, hey, can you get that in a hat? So we've been working for the last couple months, and this is what we have. These are the colors I have right now, and I just wanted to pick out a variety of colors so that I could see the response from you out there. Charcoal. Black. Mississippi Mud. This one's Aqua. The girls are really loving this color here. This is Royal Blue. It's what I have on. This is khaki. And then something new is everybody's wanting camouflage hats. So I had to I had to change up manufacturers. 
those are all Adams caps. They all have the lining on the inside and they float in water. This is the new style hat that's popular with all the new uh, kids on the block. And this one here is X, uh, XD3 and this one here is Concealed Brown. These are made these are made by Pacific Headwear and they have the Velcro hook and loop adjustment on the back. Real lightweight, stand-up cap. All of these are on my website. And I do have some new models for my hat uh, coming to uh, come into play there last week and they're already posted on there. So they're, they're kind of showing you what the hats look like when they're on. So I hope you enjoy that. Thank you.